Well, blessings to you and welcome back to our Matthew study today. We're looking at the eighth chapter of Matthew. And so as I always say, make sure that you take some time, stop the video, go get a Bible, or look it up on the internet and read the passage. Okay, take your time and read through it because there's some amazing things here that the Lord's wanting to show us. A quick review. What we've seen so far in Matthew chapters one through four is that Jesus is Messiah, the son of David. He's the king. And that John and Jesus both preached, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they both said you need to bear fruit in keeping with that repentance. Just to say you've repented and have no fruit, that won't do it. So Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom, and he also healed people. In Matthew 5 and 6, we see that one must be righteous to enter the kingdom of heaven, a righteousness that was beyond even the Pharisees, the professional righteousers. Uh, so in the first four chapters, what you see are events. In chapters 5 and 6, what you see uh, is teaching, and that teaching sort of uh, continues on. Uh, through chapter 7 also, because it's the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7. So uh, you see some segments here with Matthew. At the end of the 7th chapter, it ends with when Jesus had finished, and then we see that same type of thing, chapter 8 through 11 is another segment. So chapters 8 and 9 are events. Chapter 10 is another teaching. And so today we're looking at the 8th chapter, and we saw that Jesus was teaching on the mountain, Chapters 5 through 7 is the reason it's called Sermon on the Mount. But now the first verse, the 8th chapter, he comes off the mountain. And we see that he heals a leper. And some interesting things here, because this leper understood Jesus' authority. He came before him and bowed before him and worshipped him and literally said, Lord, if you are willing. Is that not a profound statement? If you are willing. Well, Jesus said that he was willing, so he immediately cleansed him. And he, he was instructed by Jesus to go and uphold the law and to show himself to the priest. That's what they were supposed to do according to Levitical law, to show that he had been cleansed. Then we see that Jesus, uh, previously we'd seen that he had settled in Capernaum. Well, now a centurion comes to him, and uh, he understood Jesus' authority also. Jesus was amazed by his face. So Jesus said, what you have desired is granted, and he healed the centurion's servant. Then Jesus made a, uh, an interesting statement. He said, many will come from the east and the west. And what he meant by that was that literally the Gentiles would recline at the table, that the Gentiles would be part of the kingdom. This was a profound thing. I dare say that most folks didn't know what he was saying at that time. But it, then he said, this is the sons of the kingdom, and he's referring to the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's speaking of those who are unrepentant. In other words, the ones that really would belong in the kingdom, if they would simply repent, they're going to be cast in the outer darkness. And then we see another account here where Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. And he healed many demon-possessed and cast out spirit with a word. He told them to go. And he healed all of the ill and this was fulfillment of prophecy out of Isaiah we saw the cross reference. The next verses are about following Jesus. And this is the first time in Matthew that Jesus himself uh, calls himself the Son of God, a Son of Man. And we see that Jesus has authority to heal, but he had no place to lay his head. And he gave the example of, of what it really required to follow him right here. You know, the young man was wanting to go take care of his family. And Jesus said, well, no, let the dead you know, bury the dead. All sorts of interpretations uh, to that right there. Some people believe that he wanted to go back to his parents died. Then he would have inherited the money. We don't know if that was the case, if he wanted to take care of what he thought was his responsibility. But Jesus was saying this, the kingdom is the primary responsibility. So in the next verses, we have the account of Jesus rebuking the winds and the sea. And so we see his authority over nature. And we also see that fearful have very little faith. Then in the last verses, he went across the Sea of Galilee over to the land of the Gadarenes. And you have an encounter here with two demon-possessed men. One gospel tells us about one, the other one mentions there's two. So there were two of them. And uh, even the demons within these men knew that he was the Son of God. And so the demons knew that they were under authority. You ever thought about that? They asked permission to enter into the pigs. Okay, and Jesus granted that permission. And you've heard all the jokes about that. You know, that's the first case of deviled ham and all that kind of stuff. The pigs committed suicide, all the crazy things that have come out about that. But the bottom line is the demons realized that they were going to have to go somewhere because this was the Son of God before them. Well, when all those pigs died, and you can imagine, uh, their owners went back to town told everybody what was going on, and the city literally asked Jesus to leave. We'll check out another time what happens when Jesus comes back from there. In the meantime, take this before the Lord, because I think there's some things here for us to understand. Are we not to move within this same might and power. Jesus himself said, the things that I do, even the things that you will do, and greater things. Are we not to move and be doing the same things that Jesus did? And if that's not occurring in our life, 
Uh, let's ask the Lord why. I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Cullman, Alabama, and I'll see you again next time.